Hello, Mike. Hi. Hey, Coach. How are you doing? I'm doing. I'm doing all right. How are you? Doing all right. Um, just got out of the pool. I think I'm. Uh, I think I'm dealing with a little false depression. Have you ever heard of that? False depression? <laughs> no. I've, I, no. I've, I've always had the real deal. I'm not sure. <laughs> I, is, is that kind of like flu-like symptoms? I don't know what it is, man. I feel like it's uh, something that shouldn't be happening, but it kind of is. You know, we got a lot of good things going on. There's a lot of stuff going on. Good stuff all over the place, but uh, I uh, I have a theory, actually, on what could be going on. Well, enlighten us. Well, and I know this isn't going to be necessarily popular. You know, we've been going kind of vegan, vegetarian, more vegetarian, just no meat and stuff, right? So, mm. but... Uh, you know, I hadn't been eating eggs either uh, up until about this weekend, and I started getting into the egg thing because I was like, well, you know, I don't know. I just feel like I've been wanting them. And I have a thing, a long-standing deal with eggs that uh, I, I wonder if it kind of just brings me down for some reason. Have you ever heard of that? Probably not, because you love <laughs> eggs. Eggs bring you down, huh? Eggs are bringing me down. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe that's... Maybe that's- Oh, Jesus. Maybe that's where they came up with the phrase, yeah, I just went out and laid an egg. Ooh. Maybe that's where they came up with it. We all thought it was, you know, like a big zero, but maybe it's, uh, you know, maybe somebody down the line said, hey, (sighs) these eggs are bringing me down. These eggs are bringing me down. Yeah. Uh, I think I'm going to be putting down the eggs for a little while and just to see, you know. Now that I'm into this idea of doing Strava, I think I'm going to document my eating and my workouts and everything like that. Oh, are you going to do like a My Fitness Pal whole thing, like a, a whole, you know, digital write up and profile of everything Mike Trolley? <laughs> I'm just going to put it out there. Man. And people are going to be like, what the hell is he doing? Exactly. Someone will <laughs> think you got like hacked or something. <laughs> do they even put lawnmower in there? I'm sure. The lawnmower brick. I'm, I'm sure you can put it in as cross training. Yeah. Well, as you, uh, so, um, um, blatantly pointed out the other day that my lawn needs to be mowed and uh, it still needs to be mowed. Man, it's like getting long. But uh, anyway, so I'll tell you one thing I am happy about. It's these new hats we got. I just uh, I just can't get enough of my C26 trucker hat. Yeah, I know, me too. We're, uh, we are currently sold out, but if there Well, I was going to ask. Yeah, are we out then? We are totally sold out. out. We are. We are sold out. They sold out within like two weeks. I mean, half of them are pre-ordered, and the rest of them just kind of flew off the shelf. We had, I can't remember her name off the top of my head. I'm sure she'll remind me now that I've said I can't remember. Um, She she purchased three last week. Oh. She was like, do you have any hats? I was like, yeah. She was like, I'll take three. And that was, yeah. And that was the end of the hats. And that was the, well, we had a a few more. Paula got the last one at camp this last weekend, so... I had uh, had one left, but I think uh, I think we're definitely going to reorder, um, place another order for some more hats because they definitely seem to be very popular and they fit great and they're great to wear around town and they're great to run in. I know it. I know there's a lot of great applications. They do fit great. That's the thing I like about them the most for me. Yeah, and they look good and they make you. They feel. do look good. Uh, so anyway, yeah, I did just get done swimming and. Uh, I got. I gotta say, man. I mean, I hate to keep laboring on it, but you pointed out something the other day at camp, and uh, this is something that is easily pointed out when you do your analysis. I'm sure, or whatever. But I've uh, I've cut 50 seconds off my hunter time, and <laughs> I say that half jokingly, but I have proof from my last race to this uh, session that I just. <laughs> no, I'm not even going to go there. But but. Uh, yeah, that just it's it's just amazing how one little reminder can like change the day. Um, I don't know. That, that's that's got me happy. That's good. Yeah, I'm exhausted. You're exhausted. I'm exhausted. From I mean, what? I, I mean, I obviously fell asleep halfway in the middle of the my hundred days doable video last night. Um, and uh, yeah, dude, I, I I'm taking I'm taking today off. Ooh. Yeah, I, 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 uh, I mean, I shelled myself at the lab yesterday, um, and, and you know, I mean, we've, I went in my point, and until my phone, you know, my iPhone storage decided to apparently cut me off. Um, last time the video, what I was gonna kind of share was, 
you know, I'm, I'm at that point to where I'm, you know, every day is like a teeter totter. Like I'm, I'm either just totally just burying myself in a workout, which is, which I think has caused me, not caused me, but has, um, I'm having to be much, much more aware of signs and symptoms of overtraining or too much fatigue because I've never been this dialed in. I've never been this pumped up and never been this energized. I've always been like super easily distracted and not super easily distracted, but like taking a day off or just skipping one of two workouts and like, yeah, big deal. Versus the, the the trend we've been going on and the progress that, you know, I've made, I know you've made just over these last 40 days, um, you know, has been pretty awesome. And so I'm at that point to where when I'm going to work out and I have like a quality session like I had yesterday, like there's no holding back. And so, I mean, I, I, I buried myself um, at the lab doing my, my three intervals yesterday. Um, and if I, if honestly, if I'd had just gone ahead and run right afterwards, I, I probably would have been fine. Um, but it was hot. And then I got on a phone call and I went to NRC and chatted with them about their awesome, uh, discount they're giving our athletes. And, uh, I got a new pair of shoes too. Um, but, uh, yeah, I went Brooks. You did. Don't tell, yeah, don't tell anybody. Um, but, uh, anyway, so they're last great for night, walking around in. Last night, exactly, yeah. <laughs> I'm doing it for my wall. My they were giving away free fanny packs, so I was like, yeah. When I go to Disney next year, I can just rock these Brooks. Um, <laughs> but uh, but I mean, I, last night I was. I mean, and, and you can see it in like the the uh, you know trailer of what my video was. But I was just shelled, and I woke up today with a a little tickle in the throat. Oh man! And, and I decided, you know, I said, I think I just I just kind of need a day. You know, the, our last podcast was pretty deep. Um, things going on in the world right now seem to be pretty deep. But I was like, I, I just need I just kind of need a personal day. You know, and I need to. I haven't. I've worked a little. I've worked what needed to be worked today. But um, you know, took it into daycare, came home, had an appointment at nine, and then um, I've watched my little my little baby uh, nephew from uh, 10 30 to 2 30 um he's like three weeks old and like stupid tiny um and i was like you know i just i'm just gonna take a day like i could work out tonight and and break in the new shoes but you know i went to i even swung by this uh, oh dude i swung by the juice place yeah that we, that's right there by zoe's kitchen where we go for camp and where you and i go after long ride mm-hmm. it's like it's legit. Uh, uh, yes, it's it's. They got some really solid stuff there. So I, I picked up some juice, and I've just been kind of, you know, relaxing today. And and it's funny that when I get in these kind of zones, like I get reversed coached, and so my athletes are like, oh, well, you know, maybe you should take today off or maybe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, shut the hell up! Like this is this is don't turn the tables on me. Yeah. Um, you know, and I was like, yeah, I was going to take it anyway, and I was still flirting with like a super easy tonight run, but I was like, you know, we got a really important ride tomorrow, um, you know, a key ride, and then I'm going to try and probably do a long run more off, uh, more than likely on Friday morning before I head out of town to Columbia. And so I was, I was like, you know what? I just, my body's telling me I need a day. I think mentally I need a day, so um, I'm going to take it. Well, maybe uh, maybe this is all kind of mixed into my false depression idea. You know, it's like that same thing, you know, that teeter-totter, that up and down. And uh, um, We've got 60 days till our race, roughly. Mm-hmm. And there is a lot of excitement about it. And I definitely think that uh, I've been jazzed more than usual for this uh, race. And uh, I have been pushing. If you think about it, man, you know, when you when – you, put these camps in in play you know we're kind of working seven days a week here so it's like to try and get a balance on uh you know taking that day off every now and then and that got me thinking about you know because i've i've noticed that we've got a lot of athletes going to wisconsin which is about what they say 28 days or something like that that's it's about a month away Mm -hmm. and in a way i could see how that they might be dealing with something similar that we're talking about right now so i mean you're talking about when you're oh, one, they're 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 for sure fatigued. They're fatigued I mean, they, and they're excited yeah. too. You know, they got that kind of weird 
combination, like ready to go, but uh, you, yeah, you probably, what is this, probably their big week? Is is this their biggest uh, week? T- t- ending? Two, no. uh, it's, yeah, it's pretty close. Um, actually, let me, let me pull one up and, and give you a, kind of a, I'll, I'll give everybody kind of a rundown. Um, I think they'd be, be kind of interested in that. Yeah, I'd like um, to talk about like that. Yeah, and if the you're last not four weeks, then whatever. You know, we got you know we got a lot of big Ironman races coming up, specifically, kind of connected to our group, which is Wisconsin, Chattanooga, and Louisville. And there's a ton of people that we know that are racing or involved with that. But overall, I think it's just important to kind of, you know, like you reminded me about my swim uh, flaw. I think it's just good to hear. You know, it's almost kind of like the last month. It's a quasi-taper conversation. Or it's at least a mental approach to, you know, going into your race, trying to keep your level head, trying to keep the training going but not overdo it and that sort of stuff. I think that's an interesting conversation to keep handy. Yeah, so, handy. so uh, next two weeks, this week and next week, I think the majority, not all, but most are flirting with like the 17, 18-hour range. Okay for this week and next week and then uh the week of the 28th august 28th it drops down to eight um and then the next week um you know obviously is race week so uh, but but the way that you know they've most of them did their longer run this last weekend mm-hmm. um and i generally try to make the long run like an, a split run but I mean, they're putting in these last two weeks. They're putting in just a massive amount of cycling. Um, I think the two, just the between the two weekends, they're going to put in 19 hours. Wow. Um, uh, they got a 10-hour weekend. Some of them do this weekend, and then a nine-hour weekend the next. Um, but you know, but but that's the thing. Like people taper so quick. Like they'll start tapering three weeks before. And you just get really sluggish, yeah. you know, and I think that I think two weeks to I mean, and, and but here's also the deal is, is the bigger hole that you've dug, the longer taper you need. But like for me, I haven't even dug that far. I mean, it might feel like I've dug uh, a big hole now, but it's because I've just been like going and going and going um, where they've been doing like a really slow, consistent dig. Um, but still, two weeks is like. A, a ton of time but cycling doesn't do near the damage that running does you know i'm not and, and so i'm not having them you know run these ridiculous distances i'm just and wisconsin the way it is you know it's and i know that you know people got a little surprised when the athlete god came out that barlow is back baby oh it, it is back yes and so i think that some people are got kind of a wake-up call like the oh shit wake-up call um but having said that um yeah, I mean it's uh, two weeks is is about right because you 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 soak it in, you kind of get your life back together, you you kind of um, you just you you refresh, but you stay sharp. Three weeks, dude, it's almost a month. Yeah, and so I can't I can't imagine being disengaged for that long a period of time. Um, and uh, yeah, so then they look they're looking at some pretty heavy. Uh, heavy weeks. That's at least that's for one uh, one Doug McGrath, um, and then let me pull up another one. But I mean, it's probably going to be pretty similar, just uh, depending. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's fairly similar. Um, and then get your uh, get your taper on. Right, and the, the, the a three week taper does. I mean, because there's something psychological about like when you quote unquote flip the calendar and then it's taper time mm-hmm. it, like I remember mentally thinking that oh it's over now you know and then <laughs> I mean you kind of are like well I did it I got through the hard part of training and everything like that but man the three weeks leading up to that race is so critical right I would think that mm-hmm. you know you talk about being fine tuned and just really harnessing all that energy in the right way to not wipe yourself out but still stay sharp yep. um and that's like that seems like it's a whole different chapter in the training plan to me well it's 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 staying engaged mm-hmm. you know like it's just not time to sit back and fatten up you know which is what a lot of people which is what a lot of people do they just sit back they fatten up they get disengaged and they start their mind starts to wander um towards next year or you know you just start to focus on just a too many other things versus 
you know, tapering, it's like you're that first week, this those first like four to five days, you're still so tired and trying to kind of replenish that you don't have time to think of anything else. Um, and then by the time you finally start to like really freshen up, it's the weekend before. And then you're like, Oh dude, I, I leave in, you know, like three days for the race. And so you're just like, you're cued in and you're on point and you're, um, and you're just, you're just ready to rock and roll. Um, and, and still one extra week of hard fitness gains is hard fitness gains. Um, you know, you're not going to gain any the week before, but you know, again, it's, um, it's, uh, yeah, it, we're, we're, we're in that time frame where a lot of people, you know, it's, it's, uh, I think some of the Chattanooga boys, I was, I was texting with them earlier this week. And I was like, you mean Iron Man? I know there's a million analogies for it, but it's a lot like getting married. Like once you get up to a point you're like, can we just get this shit over with? Mm-hmm. Like you've done all this work you've done all this planning. There's all this stress. There's all these things you have to do, arrangements you have to make, family, friends, itinerary. When, I'm, when are these going to get in? When, it's, it's like the hurry up and wait game. And and while that's fine and dandy, um, you know you still got to be ready to rock and roll. You know, and, and that's uh, and and the these are the these these like this four week window. You know, this like for for athletes that that thirty day window. Um, is is really where you know people are like man like they it makes or it makes or breaks their race because they either tune out because like oh, i've already done enough work i'll just start resting now and like tapering isn't rest you know tapering is is sharpening the sword that you just built you know and if you think about it as like rest then you're gonna then you, you know what rest is gonna turn into rust and you're just going to revert back into that cycle again of of just getting lazy and out of shape and not tuned in and not keyed in and 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 you know and that comes with also not having like i don't want to say a support group but not having other people that are also engaged in that same kind of you know mentality and still going with and that's why i think you know having groups and people that are that are still tuned in are ready to go you know yeah the uh now one of the things that when you when you talk about a lot of cycling over the next few weeks and uh, uh, do you do you kind of do that same thing with swimming because you at one point somebody mentioned something about maybe they're swimming too much back this is a couple about a month ago but um, and you kind of posted I've never heard of this over swimming syndrome yeah, or Jesse, something like yeah that. Jesse said that yeah I'm like uh, I've never heard of this over swim syndrome you speak yeah of. but for me like going into the I uh, this is the way I think about it too is like the last few weeks you know I've been running all my life you know from a kid to you know whatever and cycling damn near as long but what I haven't been doing is swimming especially at this type of rate so for me it was like frequency goes up a little bit those last three weeks in the pool I don't go as far but I get in the pool and I get you know what I mean I'm trying to keep my rhythm and keep my technique dialed in and keep the familiarity with the water dialed in because if you take a week off from swimming man that time the next time you jump in sometimes it can really feel unfamiliar and um foreign uh i don't know if you do that same kind of thing but i just like to get in the water even if it's not necessarily a workout and just do you know five to a hundred to a thousand or something like that just to swim just to keep it going because I you don't do. want to you got you got to keep the rhythm the feel of the water it, that yeah, sort you got to keep the feel of the water you got to keep the rhythm and it, you know it's uh it is a it's crucial you know and i use kind of the same analogy as running like it's it's better to do um, and there are there are a lot of similarities we talk about that at the swim clinic you know sessions at, at camp it's like there are a lot of similarities between running and swimming um, cuz they're both total body um movements and but swimming again is one of those things like all right well you know would if you're gonna swim you know twenty thousand over the course of the week would you be you know better off splitting it up into three swims or splitting it up into six swims and you six swims every single time you know because you keep the groove you can keep the focus you can keep you know the feel of the water and the rhythm and and you know, and that's where you know, and swimming and cycling are, are definitely right up there in terms of um, 
you know, things you need to keep, cons- you know, or uh, swimming and running are things you need to keep, keep consistent. Mm-hmm. Because it's so much about relaxing too. Um, that's the, I mean, I've noticed that firsthand, the, the many times when my swims have blown up, it's just been a sort of a, a panic that can't be restored or something like that. But if I'm, you know, feeling very amphibious, um, I get in the water and it's just a, it feels good, you know, and that starts it off in the right foot and, and it seems like to hold together more so. But if you start off kind of feeling out of place or a little bit gun shy of being in the river and the flowing water and all the people around you, that kind of be, that can be a, you know, a tough thing to escape mid race. Mm-hmm. So anyway, I'm just curious about that. What about planning and stuff, man? I mean, are you like, there's a lot of things that you want to get sort of out of the way, right? Um, you know, obviously ter- your, your room is terms of, yeah I mean you definitely I hear a lot of this like booked. what do I put in my uh, you know bags and all that sort of stuff I mean for me it's about simplicity man the, the more I race there's just the less stuff that goes in there and the less stuff I have to worry about but I don't know if you think about it like that way like special needs bags we hear a lot of talk about that and I just think that's something you need to get out of your head like completely I mean you I mean, need you, to you should already know what you're going to put in there yeah based on your training rides and then and and that's the thing like it, it's not just about your training rides and nutrition it's how long you're going to be out there um you know and, and that's the you know and, and that's where you need to be making these decisions like you know as far as that goes you need to already know what um you're going to have in there based on your experience what you've taken and then i mean yeah there, there's there's simple things i think everybody should have you know like an extra tube a co2 in case you use you know use yours uh spare or whatever on the on the front loop and i think i always put i always put that in there um a little thing of like chamois cream just in case like something crazy happens and i'm just getting chafed all to hell um and then maybe and then one extra like super concentrated nutrition bottle um that's all i put in there i don't put any food in there i don't put any extras um but a lot of people will just it's i mean you're never going to get this bag back so don't don't uh anticipate on it but it's better to have and to choose not to than to not have a choice and have zero um, you know, it's it's there's it's a great feeling to just whiz by special needs and know you don't need it. It's a good feeling to know that you have to stop for just like a minute to grab what you need, and then it's a terrible feeling knowing shit. I've already changed one tire. I, my bottle ejected. I have no nutrition, and I thought I wasn't gonna need it, so I didn't put anything in my special needs bag. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's like take number take you know the option one and two and just do everything in your power to not have to ever address number three it's one of those things too where i these iron man uh, aid stations are very well stocked you know and somebody put it said it one way it's not like you're riding off into a third world country or something like that so you know don't panic if you kind of forget something because within 15 20 miles you're going to have plenty loads of nutrition and options and things to snack on or whatever like that i was kind of laughing because last year uh, i think it was last year i was up at louisville i was watching i was just shooting video and stuff and uh i was standing in line with waski and his buddy colin and, and we were just they were getting ready to get in the swim and he and colin goes oh shit i just i forgot to put water in my bottles <laughs> 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 so he, he was starting the bike with no fluid and he kind of laughed about it, and you know he, you know he's been doing it so long that I don't know what he did, and if he just kind of went the first stretch without it or what. But uh, he wasn't panicked whatsoever, you know. And I think that uh, I don't know. There's sort of a lesson there somewhere that's like you know, uh, you know, you, you, it's good to be prepared, but like this overthinking and oversaturation of preparement is like can be detrimental to you. So simplify. And just kind of go with what you can, you know. I don't know. I get, I get so the the nutrition question is such a. Everybody goes bonkers and freaks out over it, but I mean, I would assume that you've been riding and training with your nutrition. You know what you need, and it's like yeah, you sure already know these things. Yeah, I mean, you don't want to like overcomplicate it, you know. I mean, sometimes, uh, you know, it's just. I, I get out on the run sometimes towards the end of the run my head st- my tongue and my palate just starts going crazy and I start reaching for the weirdest things you know but they're all there yeah they have the option there it's just sitting there fruit I mean out on the bike you know it's just like all there 
So it's it's just something that I, I, I think that people stress about those couple days going into the race that just need to be kind of mixed if possible because there's so many other things that you can focus on. Yeah, I mean, there's like you have a chance to minimize so much stress like weeks and months prior Mm -hmm. and that's why i don't get like when people start to panic and ask these million questions i'm like you've had a whole year what have you been doing like uh, what have you been doing um don't ever wait till the last minute you know practice it address it you know if you spent the correlation of time you spent surfing Ironman.com to, on your spe- uh, specific race website to see if the athlete guide came up or the participant list was updated or see if your bib number was out or if they'd made any updates and scroll through the Facebook page. If you took that amount of time and applied it to paying more attention to the important details of racing an all-day event the weeks and months beforehand, you would literally just be like, I don't really care when they put the athlete guide up. Because I really all I really don't care because I've already done everything I need to do, you know. A last minute thing. So the only thing I'm going to be faced with for me is like what what time they're going to start, the, you know, what time they're going to start the swim and what time is check in. As long as I can check in, between check in and you know bike check in, like I don't need to know anything else. It's 35 pages of just like nothing, and unless there's like some crazy change to the course, I, I, I'm good. Like all the all the thinking and and stress and contemplating and weighing your options, like you should have done those the day before you go on these long training rides. Like, don't treat. And and I had this discussion with somebody, uh, or actually had this discussion with multiple people. But Dennis was a person I talked to this about at campus last week because he was like, "Yeah, I chose to come to your camp instead of going to Louisville to ride the course." And I said, "Well, I'm all listen. I'm all for going to ride a course." But it's not a workout. It's a tour. You 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 usually go yes it is yes yeah 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 is it some kind of a workout sure but is it a purposeful focused dialed in you know race pace whatever you want to call it effort on the course no because a you don't know where you're going b there's tons of traffic and c you're probably with a group of like twenty or thirty people um, so it's more of a tour you know but like preparing yourself and taking notes of what you eat the day before at lunch and hydration and the dinner the night before you go a really important ride that you're going to really press it you know like like okay i'll I'll give you know an example for tomorrow you know tomorrow morning you and i are going out for four and a half hours on the trace um and you know i'd like to get in around you know 4500 to maybe even 5000 feet of climbing you know that's a huge ride you know, and that's an important ride. So what I do and how I eat and how I hydrate today and what I have tonight for dinner and tomorrow and for breakfast, I'm going to make note of. Um, because if I nail that workout, then I'll know that I did a lot of things right and I need to make sure I can apply those lessons and use those and kind of put them in my my little black book of Ironman Louisville of things I know that work. And then now that I know, now that, I know that they work, then the next time I need to, I need to repeat it and if I have another good ride and a, or another good workout, then I know this is a really good, smart way to go. Or if I flop, then I'll know it wasn't the work, the what I ate, you know, and so on and so on. So these are all things that people should pay attention to. And, and more oftentimes than not, they just fall by the wayside. Yeah, I hear you. I was talking to somebody the other day about how a lot of times I, I don't – like for something like that, that makes a lot of sense, I think. you know. But like normal, like earlier on or shorter workouts or shorter rides, or a lot of times I just sort of wing it. And it, and it, in a way, like I per, I don't purposely do it, but I, I don't mind sometimes if I forget to buy or bring exactly what I need. And I try to, you know, I, I, I like to tempt fate a little bit or like maybe put myself in a position where it's not going to be smooth as silk, you know, because to me, I train too on these like struggle phases. So, you know, if I don't have maybe as much nutrition or scratch as I need or normally would have or whatever like that can I get by on uh, you know just water or can I suck it up or can how do I react to that sort of thing I kind of like to put myself in these uh, precarious situations occasionally I don't know if you like to do that if you like you're pretty more you're a lot more prepared than I am and and that's sort of a masochistic way to look at it sometimes but I do like seeing how I'll overcome little struggles you know what I mean yeah I mean I think 
yeah, I, mean, I think you should, you know, there's nothing wrong with putting yourself in calculated, uncomfortable positions. But if you do that too many times and you're not paying enough attention, then A, you're more than likely never going to have the best workout anyway because you you haven't hydrated or, or give, given yourself the proper nutrition. Um, or B, you'll never know just how truly perfect and fast you can go because you've always kind of tempted it to go both ways. Yeah. Yeah. There's no doubt about that. I don't, I don't think it's a great practice to always get in, but I just try to not, you know, be too overly concerned about it all the time. Um, I don't know. Sometimes it's just a weird, yeah, I, I think that's one of those things where I don't, I don't have that discipline to be really charting everything that's going on in my life and and it's probably a good idea i mean to be able to look back and say wow i just crushed that ride what did i do the day or two going up into that thing um what what happened what was i eating what was i drinking the whole nine yards how was i sleeping um but once you get on my fitness pal and strava we can solve all those problems <laughs> that's true you can be like whoa mm-hmm. man you went nailed right it there. yeah you went right yep. down a dead end there, buddy. Yep, vegan burrito, hello. Yeah, I did have a vegan burrito before I went swimming. I felt pretty good today. Man, another one? Man, you're all about these burritos. Yeah, it's my quick go-to, man, these uh, frozen rice and bean burritos. I, uh, Interesting. It's my snack of sorts. It's your snack. Yeah. I mean, it's it's better than reaching for, uh, you know, cookies. <laughs> That's true. It is better reaching for the cookies. <laughs> yeah. So what else you got going on in your life? Oh, geez. My life? Uh, let's see. I'll be out of town this coming weekend. Then I got camp. Then, I mean, honestly, I'm going through, before we actually hopped on to record this, I, I was looking through my training plan, kind of outline. I'm, I'm about to have to just totally scrap it and start over. Really? Uh, no, not start over, but we, we close... Um, we close on our house, I think September 13th, maybe, or September 19th, um, new home orientation on the 13th. And then, so basically we, and then we go for, we go out of town to West Virginia for a wedding, a family wedding. So we'll be out of town that weekend. So I'll have to adjust things to the middle of the week. And then when we get back from West Virginia, we should be able to move into our new house. So that'll definitely mean a hiccup. Uh, here and there, and so I'm, and and that'll be, that'll kind of leave me if I'm looking at my calendar right, as I pull up my training peaks, um, you know, best case scenario is you know we move in uh, September, you know, 25th, 26th, and 27th, and then I'm good to go up from like the 28th on, which gives me. Uh, basically 11 days or ba- basically one last week of just real focused workouts before I do my uh, my one week taper um, and so I've been kind of playing with with things here and there about what to hit and what to put here and then I'll be you know, I'll be out of town for worlds uh, September 9th to 10th so obviously need to adjust things there so Definitely a lot of maneuvering, um, but I think a, a lot will be to reveal will be revealed in terms of continuous work and needs that I need to make uh, tomorrow uh, after our ride, and then Friday after my my little longish run. Um, in terms of um, you know duration and future workouts of what I need to hit because you know I'm you know you know me I'm not always like I need to keep pushing and pushing and pushing the higher time but uh, I can keep that you know four and a half four forty five and five hours and I'll just push it like I'm not gonna be riding any more than five hours ever um leading up to Louisville I'll just I'll make those five hours count um you know which I think is worth you know worth more and so anyway so yeah I was messing with that, and and uh, yeah, just hoping I don't get sick. I've been around a lot of babies, and um, you know, every time Hayden goes through a little thing, I'm like, yeah, but I could get sick. But I mean, dude, what am I gonna do? Like, if I, I could, not getting sick or not being, 
you know, around him is an option. It's not really, I don't, and I don't want it to be like, I, I'd rather just, you know, be around him and hang out and chill with him than, and get sick than, than not. So, um, <laughs> right. I mean, but you're, but you're ready. You feel like you're ready right now, don't you? Yo, yeah, oh, I mean, yeah, could I, could, let's see, what's say Wednesday? Yeah. Could I probably take the next three days off and do one on Sunday? Yeah. Um, you know, yeah, for sure. But, you know, and I told you the other day, like, you know, I'm in that, I'm in that place where, you know, I'm where I am now, knowing I've got at least probably 50 quality days left. Like I don't have 60, I've got 50 because I'm going to have, you know, a seven or 10 day taper in there. So I can't count those as fitness builders, but knowing how far I've come the first 40 and I know I can't expect to have these massive jumps again because just when you start working out again you there's such a different stimulus you're going to see these huge improvements you know it's like going on a diet you know yeah you're you're going to lose the first 10 pounds quick and then after that it gets that shit gets hard um but i i'm i'm at that point i'm like you know what I, i'm doing this 100 days thing i'm i'm definitely pressing the envelope um in terms of what my body can handle and how and how deep i'm actually digging in some of these workouts and and, and and I'm not skipping recovery, but I'm definitely being a little more stingy on it, you know. And I'm really am listening to my body. I'm not I'm not I'm not giving myself set recovery days um, because if I feel good, I'm going to just go. Um, and then if my body says, "Hey, dude, I need se- I need you know 36 hours of chill," like it's told me, you know. Um, the last, you know, yesterday, yesterday afternoon and today, then I'm going to listen and I'm going to get back on the horse tomorrow. But, you know, I'm at that point to where it's like, you know, do I just keep on keeping on and, and think that I can, you know, stay in the 10 hour range like I did at Wisconsin? I'm pretty sure I can do that. Um, but if I dial it in to like its maximum potential and, and, not push the limits of my abilities and what I'm able to handle physically and mentally and emotionally, but if I hit it just right, can I can I go somewhere in the nines? Hmm. I don't know, but I feel like why not I, you? I, well, not not really that. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, I mean, who cares? I mean, I feel like, but why not? Why not see? Um, you know, and and learn you know, as much as I can, you know, I, and I'm already learning these first 40 days. I mean, when, when we wrap this thing up and Louisville's done and over, I'll write a nice lengthy, you know, blog post or, you know, we can do a podcast on about, I, I've already learned some newer things about just my body and its response to certain stimulus and, and applications and specific workouts and stuff like that. So I'll be excited to share that with, with uh, the rest of the podcast verse, uh, but yeah, so I mean, you know me, I'm always thinking, I'm always, um, you know, looking for, you know, this is a good way to do things, but I'm trying to find a better way, um, and I, I know you can't rush things, and, and I don't want to come across as like, oh, I've got the 100-day hack, because that's just not the case, um, but I was in a specific spot, and I already had a good background, Um if I, it really, this is more of a, a dive and a research project on what am I actually truly capable of if I honestly pay attention to every detail and focus on this 100%. And if I can accomplish X and Y during these 100 days, then I know next year when I choose a race to pick off and f- put my full attention towards it, then I can get to Z. So that's really what's it about what what it's about. You know, it's about pushing my limits and finding out what I really have inside of me and what I really have the potential to do instead of spending the last 4 or 5 years just dicking around and saying I hope or I would like to or I'm, you know, trying to get to, you know, this or that or podium here. I'm like, you know, sure. It's great to say, but are you willing to actually put in the work to get there? And 99 people out of out of 100 aren't willing to do that. And if I if I can be that one person for these a hundred days, to go all in and focus and not skip intervals and not skip cool downs and warm ups or workouts and and uh, you know like today it's a day off. I don't feel like I'm skipping a workout. 
I feel like I'm doing what's best for my body and able to nail my workout tomorrow. Um, you know, I'm not giving myself these seven day recovery weeks or these, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm taking it day by day. And, and I think that for me, it's worked so far. And, and I think if I can, I know there's specific numbers that I need to get to, uh, you know, on the bike in order to bike the way I want to. And there's certain numbers you need to hit to on the run. I mean, I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm kind of at where I'm at in terms of the swim. Um, you know, I feel like I could go out tomorrow and go sub one hour on the swim. Um, I just, I, I felt, I felt just great at the race two weeks ago. I can't remember what it's called. Um, but I felt like, man, if I, I, could, I could go easily for another 1.4. Um, I was just in, I was just in a great rhythm. I mean, I was just in a really smooth rhythm. Like I can keep going. Um, but you know, it's, it's, it's about the bike. Um, it's about the bike and it's about getting off the bike, feeling so fresh and in a, in a good enough time to where I can just let it rip one time. And if I can get off that and if I can let it rip one time and you know, the weather and race gods are on my side, then who knows? Who knows what can happen? Yeah. It's about, uh, well, frankly, there's some maturity there and accountability going on that probably never was there, especially for me, too. It's, uh, I'm, I'm really approaching this with similar kind of strategy, but you know, the fact that we do, we are posting every day what we're doing, that there's just something to that. And it's kind of like, it just helps me get something going and so on the other side of that coin it is a little difficult sometimes when you're not you know to make the decision you've made today it's like now you got to go out you know you're going on there with a video it says i didn't work out but um <laughs> yeah, it's like there, there's something there but you have to you have to balance hey, that and manage it's one, it it's one day every 20 right that's, how I yeah, that's what it. i'm saying if, if if i would have been taping these just like for myself back in the day <laughs> shoot you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have already come up with six different training styles to ramp things up. Yeah. Um, I mean, I was the guy that I. I mean, there's. It's still posted out there someday. I I was like mid Ironman training, and I took like ten days off, <laughs> and because uh, I was just not feeling it, and I, I was just maybe like six or eight weeks away from the race, and I decided to just take ten straight days off with nothing, and yeah. uh, you know, we all saw how that panned out. But uh, so no, it's uh. I'm, I'm kind of feeling a lot of the same stuff. Um, I don't really know if I'm going out there to make that kind of prediction, but I, I've certainly my my best time is I think it was 11:30 at Chattanooga, and I, I definitely think I can get below 11 um, if I well, keep. I don't think it's a prediction. I mean, I, I'm 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 not by any means predicting that that I. Um, you know, that I'm going to go sub 10 or that I can go or that I'm already in sub 11 shape. But I feel like if I, if I really want to, you know, and I always tell people, you know, don't put a number to it. Don't put a number to it. Just, you know, I, I told this to Ross. He was like, so when are we going to go over, when are we going to go over race strategy? And I said, well, we'll, we'll go over race strategy when your training is done. You know, and people usually do it reverse. They let their race strategy dictate their training and not that their training dictates their race strategy. And that's how we do it. We let your training dictate what we want to do on race day, not vice versa. And so while I still have a lot of time and numbers and data to accumulate and hours and and, and workouts to hit and, and to stay focused and to stay motivated, um, you know, it's definitely not a prediction, but it's that, hey, I'm, a, I'm, I'm all in. You know, I've got 60 days left and, and to go all in. I know a lot of things can happen. And, you know, this is just my, you know, this is my first, like, real, real dive into, you know, no excuses, no shortcuts, no gimmies. Let's hit every workout. Let's make it count, um, you know, and let's feel good about it. Yeah. So the training will dictate the capabilities. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not, I, I, not I want to go sub 11, so I'm going to do this. It's we do the best that we can, so then we let that dictate what our race strategy is, and then we just kind of see what happens at a certain point on the run. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, if I know, 
Yeah, because when you start seeing what you're doing in these training sessions and what I'm starting to see and believe in, um, you, you, you just kind of know, especially after you've done a few, um, you know, that you're in better shape or you're better you're better prepared and uh the way i've been doing it is is not it's been it hasn't fatigued me um and i've been pushing it but i've been i've been recovering well and all these things are kind of coming together but like you're saying there's 60 days you never know what's going to happen but um i feel like it's on a slow grind a slow burn it's going the right direction and uh i like you know i like looking at uh, I actually like looking at what's ahead on the schedule for training. You know, that, that excites me to see what kind of gains we can make just in this next two months. I'm pumped. You're pumped. We'll see. Uh, yeah. I'm, oh, I got a day off. Of course, I'm pumped. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm ready to hit it tomorrow and see where I'm at and uh, adjust and, and go from there. So we'll see. But yeah, like you said, a lot of, a lot of things can happen in the next 60 days. I've, I've had a pretty good uninterrupted first 40 days. I mean, you know, I think I did underestimate how much camp wipes me out. Um, you know, and I hit it, I hit it easy on Monday. I always swim. And then I, I, like I said, I dug it deep yesterday, um, at the lab, but, um, you know, and we got camp coming up again next week. So I definitely think a, um, uh, you know, an easier, not, well, tomorrow's not going to be easy, but, you know, the weekend I'll be traveling, you know, to Columbia for the clinic and that's, you know, travel is always stress and, and camp is work and that's, so that's like a, an accumulated stress. And so, um, definitely a lot of other outside stress, but, but I love it. And, and I think just as stressful as camp is, it's, it's so good for me, um, to do things and to be out there and to be just crushing it. It, it definitely brings out a better side of my training and, and a benefit and it, cause it's definitely not a negative. No way, man. It's a, uh, it's great to get out there. It's great with pe- the people around and, uh, everybody's just like so into it and ready to push it and you're going to be with them. I mean, mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't see where there is a negative to that. There's not, not many, not many that I can think of. And you can usually think of them all. I can, especially with this, uh, faulty, de- what is it called? False depression that I have. Yeah. You're, up. you're, you're, de- <laughs> Your de- your depression like symptoms? Yeah, well, not, sometimes the world brings me down, man. I gotta stop. Dude, uh, I hear you, man. It is, uh, yeah. Just I watched an interesting while well, I was watching our little three week old. Uh, this afternoon, I watched a really really cool um, documentary on uh, on Netflix. Um, that was I encourage anybody who. Well, even if you're just a parent, but especially if you're uh, uh, raising um, raising a son of any kind, you know, or multiple, you know, children or whatever. Um, I just watched a, a documentary called "The Mask You Live In," uh, and it was basically about the. Um, well, it starts off and just says he he wears a mask and his face will grow to fit it, and it just talks about basically men and the male kind of masculinity um issues that we face in america and how like you're always supposed to be told like oh you should man up and don't cry and football players are tough and you should and it's like you know how it ends up shaping um men from such an early age but anyway but uh yeah that's what i do in my personal day that's good man yeah it was good felt felt good about it um it's a great documentary. I mean, I mean, it's raising a son, and you know, it's um, and then hearing these kids talk and like just show them the trajectory of of you know kids and having them open up about things, and it's it's really interesting. I mean, I know that I you know you you're shaped at such a young age. I know I was, and you know, see this and like, man, like I definitely don't want my son shaped, you know, to um, you know, when like parents like tell their kids they should. You're like you should you should really play football yeah i'm like and and not do this and i'm like you be, you know and what if you're your whole life your kid wanted to do something else and just didn't you know and yeah it's just yeah it's a yeah we weren't we went deep enough last podcast and won't go deep in this one but well i just think i, I think things are changing man they really are and uh and a lot faster than you know when when like my dad you know the, the generation stuff's going on and i think and i 
here's the thing about it is like I like to think that there's positive change going on all over the place but man every time I in you know I worked in the news you know for 14 oh, years know. 14 years I worked in the news and every time I turn on the news it's just terrible and there's like it, it's like I know the secrets right so I had a boss that literally told me at one point, I used to do the marketing and the promos and stuff like coming up tonight at 10, the, the, what police found at the end of this cul-de-sac will shock you beyond belief or whatever. Really. So like, how can you not watch that, right? And uh, I was kind of like toying around with how am I going to systematically, formulaically write these things or make, you know, I was always trying to come up with a, like a better method of writing those sorts of things. And I, I was talking to my boss about it and he goes, I don't care what you write. Just make sure it says without saying watch tonight or die. That was what he said to me. Mm-hmm. Watch tonight or die. It was like the mentality of the, the leadership in the media. And, you know, I know that's an isolated incident for there, but I was, you know, I worked in several different around consultants and all that sort of thing, and it was the same deal. It's like pull the, heart, pull the heartstrings, scare the crap out of them, you know, convince them that they have to watch or, you know, <laughs> the world's coming to an end. And that's just like... It, it seems like it's been kind of getting worse because really I used to market the news, but now the news markets itself mm-hmm. in a weird way because the news yeah. becomes the marketing and everything within the news is like that same kind of tease, scary, like lead you along, you know, and look, they, and they always show the worst, worst video, you know, like the worst thing going on from the worst angle and they always put dramatic music behind it and it seems scarier than it really is or whatever this case may be i'm not saying anything good is going on in some of these situations but i'm just saying that like there's a lot of good stuff going on in the world i really just i think the change is change is difficult you know like sometimes you gotta you know walk through the fire like bukowski said right Yep. And what matters, uh, what matters most is how you walk through the fire. Yeah. So you come out the other side, and and uh, you know sometimes like you know there, there's a thing that I always somebody said that uh, it's a famous quote. This is like you know right about the time you think things are just too hard to handle, that's about when you're ready to make a step forward, like a big gain, or like you know that's when things are going to really change for you. Yeah. And I think a lot of times I face that, you know when. It's like the end of the world thought, you know, you're just like, man, this isn't getting any better. I suck at this or I suck at the swim or whatever. And just when you're struggling the most is about right when you're going to make a breakthrough. So don't give up, you know, don't walk away, don't throw in the towel, you know, and that's kind of the attitude I like to bring to triathlon or just anything really. I like to look, you know, past like the immediate garbage that seems to be you know, festering inside everybody's heads and, and look at like the big pictures like, wow, man, we, I think we're going the right way. It's just that, like, there's always going to be snags, you know, that's just part of the hero's well, I mean, journey. It's, yeah, it's true. I mean, and you know, for me, like the process of change is a lot like, you know, the, the growth of a really, really strong tree as it grows from up under, you might not see it and it might not seem like much, until it's like really really ingrained its roots and started to like sprout up and then it's like oh well we can't tear this thing down like you know it's like where did this thing come from um and by that time it's too late you know which is a good thing um but yeah i mean there's yeah there's definitely there's always going to be difficult um difficult things going on you know in the world um and really it's just it's a it's there's always going to be difficult things going on with every person and that's where it kind of comes down to, I think, is, you know, the the best things we can all do is do something for ourselves. Yeah. And I know it sounds, and I know it sounds selfish, and you know, they say that about AA all the time. It's a selfish program, which I don't necessarily think is true. But um, well, they say that about triathlon, man. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it can be so, but it's like, and that's you know, part of this whole journey has been such a positive effect on me. Is 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 you, you know, it's so much easier to support. And uh, and love other people and respect their journey and be happy for them than it is to put effort and energy into tearing them down or making fun of them or talking about how slow they are or why they don't have enough money or all that crap. You know, it's just like we we've all got we've all got our own th- own stuff and it'd be so it's it's such a it's so much more of an enjoyable journey when you're able to go on. 
go with other people and, and do it. You know, and I, after the last podcast, I had some just some really, really awesome text messages, Facebook messages, emails that I got from either current athletes or listeners who could relate in, in one way, shape or form with, with part of the story, you know, that I was able to share. And I just, I encourage everybody that, you know, while you may not be comfortable, you know, sharing your, you know, some of your life struggles as in depth and in detail as I've become accustomed to doing, um, you know, never be afraid to kind of reach out for help, you know, and ask somebody or just, just, I think you, I think you'd be surprised that even if you don't ask for help, but if you allow other people to see that you're vulnerable or, um, going through an issue or whatever, how many people would voluntarily rush to your side to ask what they can do, you know, and how they, and how they can help. Like, you know, just let me know, let me know what, let me know what I can do. Let me know how I can help. Um, well, they and, know too. That's like, you, you know, that you can't help anybody unless they are open to that help. And I think that's the signal that's sent out a lot of times. It's like, all right, you know, you, you're just, you're given in and you're ready to get helped and let, or, you know, cause people want to do it. It's just that, you know, there, it's hard to really be effective and try to help somebody if they don't want to be helped. And I think the ultimate thing too is like what you were just talking about. It's like, it, it's, it's so much easier to reach out and support and be kind and love people. If you love yourself, mm-hmm. you know, that's the selfish yeah. part of, and you know, quote unquote, selfish part of why I got into triathlon and why I do meditation and why I, you know, read these books and study and learn and try to figure these things out is because I want to be, when you're in your comfort zone, when you're comfortable with who you are and what you're doing, that it just, you know, that transfers so much easier, you know? So really, I mean, yeah, you, I think that's the answer to everything is like people just need to look inside more instead of spewing everything they see and throwing it out in everybody else's face it's like jesus really it all starts inside man learn to love yourself i agree all right well i'm gonna go love myself on a little run here ah good for you yeah so i'm I'm gonna do a swim and a run today what are you up to nothing (laughs) (laughs) don't you feel like you're getting ahead of me no i just think you're more actualized man i think you love yourself more and i love when we go ride tomorrow don't be telling me you know oh well i mean i I worked out yesterday not built-in excuses dude i'm building excuses yeah uh, i can already tell man triathlete 101 (laughs) building i'm training through this long ride and you took yesterday you took yesterday off and went on a juice cleanse, and then you dominated. Yeah, the juice is the juice bar sponsoring us yet? I'm gonna, I, I might work on it. Yeah, right. uh, dear God, they're so expensive. We'd need a sponsorship. <laughs> uh, we need at least fifty percent off. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like you know, you guys pay us, and we'll work it out. Here's your nine dollar uh, carrot juice, bro. Exactly. Enjoy. But, uh, but no, I, I'm I'm pumped for tomorrow, and we'll we'll post a, I'll post a pic, or you guys can follow Mike on Strava, but. Yeah, I'm excited to hit up our. I, I'm assuming we're gonna hit our same our uh, same hill section. Yeah, we like that one. Yeah, I do too. And it's gonna be hot tomorrow, so it's a little more shaded. So I'm I'm looking forward to pounding those hills. Okay, we'll pound them together. Nine o'clock. Nine o'clock. I don't know if we're gonna have Kenny, but uh, well, I'll probably get there at eight thirty, get a couple extra miles, and make it mad. Why do you see? All right, that's it. <laughs> eight thirty then. <laughs> I mean, like, it's not better when I'm, like, you know, five minutes ahead of time and I come driving into the trace, the, the parkway, and I see you already riding towards me. I'm like, Jesus. Going up the, going up the big hill. Now, yeah, next time that happens, I'm going to get out and get on my bike as fast as I can and just take off. <laughs> uh, uh, hey, listen, man, at this rate, unless you fix it, it takes you 30 minutes just to clip in, so I'm not worried about losing That's you. That's a good point. That's a good point. I got to get that fixed. Maybe I should do that. Hey, That's anyway, yeah, join the Crushing Iron Group. Search Crushing Iron Group on Facebook. We got a little private group in there. It's awesome. And uh, let us know if you want more hats or any kind of gear or anything like that. We're thinking about getting some orders together for some of these big races. So let it be known. Let it be known, man. Okay, coming up on one hour, man. Let's get over it before we get over an hour. 
Sounds good, man. Talk to you later. All right. See you, bud. Bye. See you.